Today we're talking about the Netherlands, which means I need to start by getting something off my chest. Stop saying I look like Duncan Lawrence. Now that's out the way early. <laughs> Before we get to Joost Klein, we have to do a slight detour via Serbia and via Latvia. So let's get right into it. Quickly before we do that, don't forget to like the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Make sure to follow me and my editor Jay on Twitter if you haven't already. I have Instagram as well and you can follow me there and you can get the videos a day early and be thanked in each video if you subscribe on Patreon. Last but not least, thank you so much because we have just, as I'm filming this, hit 5,000 subscribers. Now that's out the way, we're gonna talk about cats for the second time in three weeks because we're starting tonight's episode in Latvia with their national final supernova. This show introduced us this year to the Cats song by Katrina Gulpalo. I gotta be honest, I hated this song from the moment I heard it, but then something weird happened and I listened back to it for this video and suddenly I enjoyed it. For whatever reason, this just works in my brain now. I can't explain it, but I just really enjoy it. On what the song is actually about, it's actually really quite wholesome. It's a song sung from the point of view of a cat talking about how much the cat loves its owner. And while this naturally means it's not the most sophisticated song in the world, it's really very silly. It's also very fun. And like, you can't hold it against anyone for having a little bit of fun. Like the fact that there are cat sound effects in the background, they've done her hair like it's a pair of cat ears. The fact that it has a silly cat inspired dance. I actually kind of feel bad that I ever hated this because like, it's just fun. It's silly, it's stupid, it's ridiculous. It's everything I wanted it to be. As well as all of that, this song is so catchy, like ridiculously catchy. You listen to this once and it's burned into your brain forever. It feels like they built it specifically in a lab to make it as catchy as possible. And as a result, all I can think about is this song and it's in my head now as I'm recording it. Please, it won't leave, someone send help. One last thing before we move on, and this isn't related, but I can't miss another opportunity to talk about Hera, who is on screen now. Hera is my cousin's cat. When he moved to Switzerland, I looked after her for six months and I love her and miss her very much. Anyway, before I cry, let's move on. Moving on to the second place in this selection, we have Vestules with their song, Kur, which translates to where. <laughs> The vibe of this song is about as different as you could possibly imagine from the cat song. While the cat song is a fun, unserious, silly little catchy bop, this is a very serious song in the words of the band about being alone and feeling alone even when you're with others. Vestiles are right at the start of their careers. These guys are still in high school, but they have written something which lyrically is really, really impressive. And this is such a promising start to their careers. I'll freely admit, I don't think this song is my kind of music. It's not my kind of genre. Even coming at it from the perspective of someone who's not going to enjoy it as much, I can still see the artistry here. I really recommend you go and read the lyrics because I'm assuming most of you won't speak Latvian. And these lyrics, are really, really quite touching. While we're on the subject of Latvian, actually, this was the only song in Latvian in the final of the national selection. And for me, that's a real shame. I would love to see the Latvian language return to Eurovision again, especially given that we've only ever seen it once. And I think that the example that Lithuania is setting this year and hopefully getting a really strong result will hopefully encourage artists in Latvia to be a bit bolder as well. I do think that despite the success of acts singing in Finnish and Ukrainian and Serbian in recent years, there is still a perception in a lot of countries that singing in English is the route to take to get to Eurovision success. And I hope that sometime soon, Latvia will take a risk, send a song in Latvian, and that risk pays off because that way it'll just encourage so many more artists to give it a go and we could see a resurgence of the Latvian language in Eurovision. This year was not to be the year for the Latvian language though and the winner of the selection was Dons with his song Hollow, which was the overwhelming favorite from the moment it was released. It's killing me slow, trying to make me just another believer. There's a really obvious comparison here, so let's just get it out of the way now. Yes, it kind of sounds like a Hosier song. Is that the most original thing in the world? 
No, at the same time, it's a territory that has a lot of fans. There's a lot of people that this could potentially appeal to. And if performed well, I don't see why it couldn't be successful at Eurovision. To get that success though, you need a performance that stands out in two ways. And I'm gonna spell out both of them now. One of them is good news, and one of them is not so good news at this stage for Latvia. The good news is the vocals, and Don's vocal is perfect. It's totally flawless. Every time I've seen him perform this song, he does it absolutely 100% bang on the money. That's great, no need to work on that. If I was gonna make one comment, I would love to see the quite sparse bridge at the moment be used as an opportunity to really show off his voice. I know it's a little cliche to get to the bridge and the final chorus and start belting out the big notes, but it does work. The reason it's a well-trodden path is because it's also a successful one. There's an opportunity to do that here and Don's clearly has the voice to do it. With that covered, let's talk about the area that needs a little bit more work and that is the staging. They did improve this from the semi-final to the final, but both of the performances had one major problem, which was that they were incredibly static. There's no real movement. Obviously you're limited by the amount of camera positions and the size of the stage at the national selection, but it's clear that something needs to be done here and it needs a shake up. Right now, Don spends most of the performance staring into middle distance. That has to change ASAP. The reason we can tell in this performance that it's so important is that in the outro, he does start making eye contact and instantly the connection is stronger. If you can spend the whole three minutes building that up, the whole performance is gonna be elevated. It's a simple change, admittedly a difficult one for some performers to do, but it is so important. If anything, it is the single most important change that they could make to this. Of course, changing how much eye contact he makes won't make the performance less static. And you can do that with dynamic camera angles. You can do that with dancers. You can do that by having Dons himself move around the stage more in Sweden or with clever effects that we've seen God knows how many in Eurovision over the years. It's gonna be difficult because it has to be done tastefully. This is a song that could easily be overwhelmed if you add too much. So it's a balancing act, but I do think it's a risk they have to take. Changing the staging up a little bit, doing something different to try and elevate this. If they get it right, it could really pay off in a big way. All of this leads to the question, where is it going to end up? And this is actually, to be honest, one of the most difficult predictions for me. I think there is a really wide range of potential outcomes for Latvia at Eurovision this year. The big challenge is going to be making it out of the all Televote semi-final. That's why getting this staging and getting this storytelling right is so, so important. If they do that, they will make it through. At that point, I think you're looking at a pretty good result because the juries will pick up on that excellent voice and they will really push this up the scoreboard. For that reason, I'm gonna say, if they get it wrong, they're not qualifying. They're gonna come 12th, 13th in the semi-final. If they get it right, this could come as high as 11th, 12th overall with a really strong top 10 finish in the juries. For Latvia's sake, given how poor a run they've had at Eurovision recently, and in order to achieve justice for sudden lights last year, who were robbed, I hope it's the latter. And I really hope they pull this together and deliver a really great performance at Eurovision. Now we're going south from the Baltic Sea to the Balkans because it's time to talk about Serbia. I am so excited about this. I have been waiting to talk about this show for weeks because this could be my favorite national final of the whole year. Seriously, I could have talked about 10 songs in this show, but for time's sake, these videos are long enough already. Sorry, Jay. I'm only gonna talk about five. Let's start with Constractor, who returned to this show after her victory in 2022 with her song, Nova Bolje. <laughs> Firstly, the elephant in the room. Yes, the staging is exactly the same as in Corporasano. To a non-Serbian speaker, to someone who doesn't understand the message of the song, this might seem confusing or turn you off at first. But as was clear to domestic viewers who understood the message of the song, the entire thing is about politicians over-promising and then delivering exactly the same as before. The reason it's exactly the same as in Corporasano is because that is the whole point of the song. I gotta say, Constractor, fair play. You totally played me on this one and I am more than happy to put my hands up and say I was the ignorant foreigner. I should have understood this before the show and I didn't. My bad. Naturally though, of course the performance was very clever. It didn't quite have the magic of Incorporesano. It didn't have the same air that there was about to be a phenomenon in response to this song like there was with Incorporesano. As a result, it just wasn't quite as magical and it was never going to hit the same heights or win the show this time around. So, Constractor's song, clever with a subtle message. Time to go to the complete opposite because we're going to talk about the most ultra-nationalist song in any national final this year, Gnesto Orlova by Breskvitsa. Oh, oh, oh. 
Welcome to the ESC Gabe course in unsubtle lyric meanings. Today's example is as follows. A grey cloud hides the sky. Blackbirds again. It thunders. It flashes. Hail falls and destroys the eagle's nest. Dad says to the little eagle, it will be over, son. The blackbirds will go away. It will be sunny again. Hey, just out of interest, I wonder what the national symbol of Albania is. And it's also really clear that the eagle's nest is Kosovo. This song is talking about what Serbians see as an Albanian occupation of Kosovo. One other theory that I saw mentioned on some Serbian forums was that this song actually is talking about the NATO airstrikes in Serbia in the 1990s. Essentially, this is like an all-you-can-eat buffet of ultra-nationalist Serbian dog whistles. The great thing about a song like this in a national final is that when it inevitably doesn't win, all the most insane people you've ever come across in your life all collectively lose their minds. The editor of one Serbian news outlet, Dragan Vucicevic, found time in between being convicted of hate speech and being convicted of defamation to say that the result was rigged. Seriously, he was sentenced to six months in prison for defamation the day after he said this. At the same time, fans of this song arranged a protest, which Breskvica herself endorsed in a TV interview. They threatened to block major roads in Belgrade unless the result was overturned. Unfortunately, they didn't quite get the numbers that they were expecting. In the end, the protesters were numbered at about two dozen, with a dozen news reporters alongside to take photos of them all looking ridiculous. This man stood outside the Serbian state TV offices and shouted that they were Albanian pussies. In unrelated news, your dad is still handling the divorce really, really badly. I want to talk about three more songs, and before we move on to two of, in my opinion, the best ballads in any national final this year, there is one other song I want to talk about, and this one actually didn't even make it out of the semi-final. The reason I want to talk about this is that it really struck a chord with me, and I'm going to explain why. The song is Koyeta Žena by Filari. Koyeta Žena Given that this didn't make the final, I get that it might seem a bit left field to give it such a prominent feature in between essentially the top four songs of the show, but let me explain why. There are just a whole bunch of things that I wanted to talk about from the moment I saw this in the show. And I think that this song actually quite nicely sums up why this national final is so strong. For the purposes of this, let's ignore the fact that the vocal performance live was not the best, but everything else about this was really exceptional for me. The song's title, Koyata Jena, translates as Who Is That Woman? And it tells the story of a man contemplating his femininity or even his gender identity. In either case, it's clear that it's coming from the perspective of somebody who is, at least on some level, ashamed of it, or at least in denial in some way. The lyrics ask questions like, who is that woman hiding in inside of me and I don't give her to anyone and why does she follow me everywhere? Eventually, as the song reaches its climax, the lyrics do too. Though he still asks if that woman is him, it feels like a moment of clarity, a moment of acceptance inside himself. This message is further punctuated by the way this song is staged. All through the performance, it is made up of the colors blue and pink, almost fighting for space to represent the two sides of Filari fighting against each other in sides. This is further emphasized by the use of androgynous human figures on the screen and on the backing. Then you get to this final chorus, everything's in black and white. It's like a moment of clarity. The words embrace your femininity and sometimes the king is a woman are emblazoned across the screen. It feels like a resolution or at least a partial resolution has been reached in his mind. The reason why this song sums up why I love this national final so much is because it shows you the mindset of the organizers and it shows how fearless they are in a country that has a really conservative political and media environment. We should acknowledge that some steps have been taken forward in Serbia in recent years with regard to LGBT plus rights, but there is a really long way to go. And this kind of performance has helped enshrine Pesmaza Evrovizio as one of the premier showcases for queer culture in Serbia today. We should face the reality that this kind of song, which is so avant-garde, that is musically so challenging in a lot of ways, would not make it into most national selections. There is no way you would see this in a polished national final in the Nordic countries, for example. I haven't even talked about the fact that this song is in the time signature 7-4, and this isn't actually the first time we've seen Serbia do this either. Muscarcina by Sara Yo, that came second to Constructor in 2022, was in the time signature 9 
eight. When I talk about variety in music, variety in genre, and this is especially relevant given how critical I was of the lack of this in Melody Festival and last week, this is what I mean. You need to have the willingness to promote these kinds of messages, the willingness to go out there to put things that are going to challenge the listener, that are going to make people think that not everyone is going to enjoy. You accept that to build a richer show and to build an environment that every genre of music can thrive in. Because of this, it is just so important that the creative team behind this show stays in place because what they're doing doing is really, really incredible, and I hope they keep on going with it. Sadly, Filari did miss out on the final by the thinnest of margins. 79 votes were all that separated him from gaining the one additional point he needed to get into the final qualification spot. One side note before we move on, I do think it's really ironic that we had two songs in 7-4 this year. One was an LGBT plus anthem, one was one of the most nationalist pieces of music I've ever heard in my life. They share that one similarity and literally nothing else at all. Now, time to talk about my personal favourite, but unfortunately not the winner of this selection, Zorya, with her song Lik u Ogledalu. Oh my god, that voice! I mean, did you hear that? That was amazing! Like, in terms of sheer vocal ability, Zoria is off the charts. Totally off the charts, blew everyone away. I know that's not everything in making a performance and in making a song for this contest, but the talent that this woman has is absolutely stunning. I have found myself listening to this live performance over and over and over again. And writing this video, I rediscovered it and had another binge where I listened to it 10, 15 times in a row. I just think it's so, so special. And I'm so grateful that this contest has opened my eyes to things like this that I never would have seen if it weren't for the fact that I love Eurovision. In terms of the song itself, think Balkan Ballad and think Bond theme. Mash them together and that's what you get. It's high drama from start to finish. It builds and it builds and it builds towards this dramatic finale. Yes, it's been done before. It's a well-trodden path in Eurovision, but this is a great example of how to do that well. Naturally, since the song's title translates to Face in the Mirror, this performance makes liberal use of them. If I was going to criticize, I would love to have seen these featured more and been more of the architecture around her rather than simply dancers holding these rectangular mirrors. I think the effect they were going for was lost in some areas and didn't quite get to the heights that I would have liked. There's a lot of really clever camera tricks you can do with fixed mirrors that they didn't take full advantage of because of the way in which they staged this performance. Had they fully leaned into this and stayed away from the Jacques Hudek style projections of Zoria onto the back screen, I think we could have seen an even better result. We did get a little bit of this at the end when Zoria removes her black wig and looks into a broken mirror into the camera. Yes, a wig literally went flying in this performance, but that alone wasn't enough. And I just think it could have had a little bit more. It didn't stop it from being my favorite. And had I been the one making the choice, this is what I would have sent to Eurovision. But it just could have been even more amazing than it already was. Now we've had a really good look at some of the highlights of this show. It's time to talk about the winner, which was Teodora with her song, Ramonda. <laughs> The Ramonda, by the way, is a flower. It's native to the area of the Balkans, so that's what she's singing about. Teodora's background is the Berklee College of Music in Boston, which is generally accepted to be one of the best in the world, and so it's no surprise that she wrote this song herself. Teodora actually rose to prominence in Serbia last year with her song Janum. As of the time of recording, this song has over 78 million views, on the official video. It also was massive on TikTok. It blew up last year. It was heavily associated with the protests in Belgrade that followed a school shooting that happened in 2023. Like Janum, Ramonda is a ballad. And also like Janum, it's really, really sad. The lyrics of Ramonda talk about a world that is on fire where flowers don't grow anymore. In the very last two lines, we do get a ray of hope when a single Ramonda rises from the ashes. So we should make no mistake, this is a slow ballad, a mourning ballad, almost a funereal song in many ways, but it does have that little bit of light at the end that provides a really satisfying resolution. And I have to say, I think the way the song and the staging come together to guide us to that moment is really, really special. You have this stunning visual of the flower sprouting over Teodora's head 
as the song finishes. Crucially, I don't think the message is lost by the fact that most viewers won't understand the lyrics as they're hearing them. It felt to me that just the emotion of Teodora's performance is more than enough to hold our hands, even as non-native Serbian speakers, and guide us to that final conclusion. I felt like I understood this song from the very first time I saw this performance. I think you can probably see from my comments that I'm quite optimistic about where Serbia is going to end up this year. I think qualification will be just fine. It's probably the strongest ballad in that semi-final, maybe competing with Portugal for me personally, but I understand that could be an acquired taste. More on them in a few weeks. Seriously though, I think we're looking at a song that could do really, really well with the juries and decently with the public vote. And for that reason, Serbia could be on for a return to the top 10. It requires everything to go their way, but I could see a finish as high as seventh or eighth, and it would be richly deserved because this was a national final that has produced a truly beautiful winner and a song that is so deserving of a place at the contest. A couple of final thoughts from me just before we move on. Firstly, I wanna say this national final was genuinely a privilege to watch and a privilege to research. And I just want to say thanks to the production team and the creative teams that put this together. To any Serbians watching this, you should be really, really proud of the show that was produced this year on a pretty small budget. On that subject, the um, president of the board of directors of the national broadcaster actually accused the production team of going over the budget. So the production team wrote back to him in a letter that basically said, dear Mr. President, f you. 10 out of 10, no notes, absolutely sensational. Speaking to Serbians making this video, they really highlighted the role of the former director of entertainment at the broadcaster, Olivera Kovacevic, for her contribution in making this show over the last few years get to this point. So a special shout out to her. Let's move on because I've teased it enough. It's time to talk about the Netherlands. It was another internal selection for the Netherlands this year and they selected Joost Klein with his song Europapa. <laughs> The campaign to get Joost to Eurovision started early, well before he was selected, and it was endorsed by people like Karia. You are so claim and you go to fucking Eurovision, okay? And was all over social media for months. What that meant was the hype was massive. This launch was so anticipated, and there was pressure on Joost to deliver. And deliver? Oh, he absolutely did. This went straight to number one in the Netherlands. It's also number one in the Flemish-speaking half of Belgium, and that probably has something to do with the fact this is one of the catchiest songs I have ever heard in my life. You only need to hear that chorus once, and you'll find yourself singing it for weeks. Even if the song doesn't click with you at first, it's gonna be in your head. You're gonna be singing it. I know this because that's exactly the position I found myself in. Full disclosure, when I first listened to this song, I didn't like it. I just didn't like it at all. I didn't get it, it didn't click, which is particularly strange because this is the kind of thing that usually I love from the moment I hear it. I said as much on the ESC United live stream a few weeks ago when I talked about this and you should make sure to subscribe to ESC United and not miss anything from them this season. That chorus though, stayed stuck in my head long enough for it to start working for me. And at this point, I'm rapidly becoming obsessed. To be honest, I was always gonna end up loving a song that has a happy hardcore breakdown in the bridge. I mean, seriously, get a load of this. <laughs> So we've established this song is a banger. We've established that it's done really well domestically and has had an amazing reception in the Netherlands and in Belgium. But this is a song that, much like Shrek, like Onions, and like Cine Sabotage, has layers. So let's dig a bit deeper and unpeel some of them. When it comes to the lyrics of this song and the visuals in the music video, we need to understand one thing, and that is that Joost lost both of his parents at a very young age. Naturally, this has had a huge impact on his life and in turn, on the lyrics he writes. Behind all the bluster and high energy, this is actually a love letter to Joost's dad. It talks about the worldview that he brought Joost up to follow. In his own words, it's the story of a young orphan traveling across Europe, trying to find himself, and while never quite fitting in, never knowing truly what his place was, always jumping at the opportunities that that was going to give him. The outro, in total opposition to the mood of the rest of the song, features Joost speaking over a quiet piano accompaniment. He's standing facing a man that clearly represents him as a child standing alongside his father. And in Dutch, he says, at the end of the day, we are all human beings. My father once told me it's a world without borders. 
I miss you every day is what I secretly whisper. You see, Dad, I listen to you. I think it's really special to be able to make a song this joyful and this bouncy and simultaneously make it a really poignant, emotional love letter to somebody so close to you that you've lost. The song is full of subtle references to this as well. For example, when Yost says he turns on the radio and hears the song Papote by Stromae, that song title translates to Dad, Where Are You? And Stromae in that song talks about his experiences of growing up without a father figure. I'd seriously recommend, if you can't speak Dutch, go and read these lyrics in English because they are soaked full of meaning. And I think it's so important to understand the song in the fullest possible way as a Eurovision fan to understand the lyrics that Joost is singing. Naturally, as the song is in Dutch, some are gonna miss the message. And I think nowhere is that going to be more true than where I live here in the UK. When May comes, I'm absolutely ready for the fact that people will interpret this song in bad faith, dismiss it as a piece of EU propaganda, which is a phrase the newspapers absolutely love here, or simply say it's a joke song that shouldn't be taken seriously. It's obviously very sad that the journalistic standards of this country are so low that that's the only thing that they'll take from this. But I wanna say this now on behalf of the vast majority of British young people who identify far more with Yoast's worldview than with anything that you see in any of the garbage newspapers that are saying these things. This song puts forward a worldview that I, and I think a great many others in this country, really, really identify with. As this song grows on me more, I just kind of want to say thank you to Yoast because this is a song that I think myself and a lot of people I know here on Brexit Island are really going to identify with on a whole number of levels. To the Dutchies watching this video right now, please, please, please don't read what the British media say about your song. It's not worth it. We don't like it either. I'm sorry in advance. I am getting dangerously close to spiral off into a rant about Brexit, so I'm going to distract myself by talking about how I think this song is going to do at Eurovision. Maybe I'm deluding myself, but personally, I think this has massive, massive potential. I'm not even going to talk about the semi-final because qualification is obvious. There is no way this doesn't qualify. We can tick that box now and move on. Let's talk about how high it could go. Let's start with the good news. When it comes to the televote, the sky really is the limit for this. I could see, honestly, a 300-point score for this song in the televote. If people connect to it, if people relate to it in the way that I really think they could, this could be the winner of the televote at Eurovision 2024. The bad news, of course, is that it's gonna struggle more with the juries. And I do have a ray of light to shine on this that hopefully will give people a little bit of hope, but I don't want to go over the top here. So take everything I'm about to say with a pinch of salt. We should point out, Cha 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 last year did get 150 points from the jury vote. It's not impossible for Europapa to do the same. If it does as well as it could do with the televote and it delivers that kind of jury vote score, 450 points in a year as open as this and as balanced as this across all of the songs, that's enough to put you in the conversation for the win. It obviously requires a lot of other songs to stay in contention, but just not quite match those heights for it to work out that way, but it is not impossible. Take some deep breaths, Dutchies, because don't get ahead of yourselves here. This is a long shot. Don't get me wrong, it really is a long shot. I'm just painting the scenario that I think it could win in because it's not totally impossible. I don't think it's the most likely thing, but I would love to see it happen. In any case, no matter what happens, I'm gonna spend the next few months really enjoying listening to this song on repeat. I am so glad that it has clicked for me because now it has. I absolutely love it. In the meantime, if you did enjoy this video, I would really appreciate it if you could like and subscribe. And I will be back with more next week. In the meantime, there's only one more thing to say. Welcome in Europa, Jonger.